Places, everyone. Kick it off in five, four, three, two. Hello, Hampton. My name is Tayshaun Alexander. I'm Nadia Jacobs. And I'm Marimar Flores. And we're your hosts for On Air. This is the first episode of a new monthly show right here in Hampton. On Air is a show that will focus on events and sports happening right here in Hampton Roads, as well as dishing out information on a regional, national, and worldwide level. We will also feature some easy cooking and baking recipes, along with the latest and greatest in tech gear. This show is produced entirely by students at Phoebus High School enrolled in the Academy of Digital Video Production. We are all second year students in the Academy and this is one of our major projects showcasing what we learn in television and media production. How to produce television programming. We'll get more into the behind the scenes stuff on a later episode, but for today, we have a lot planned for this show. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some news, tips and tricks, and even some laughs. Let's get started. Up first for this month, we're kicking off with cooking. One of our production teams had the chance to get with some of the culinary students at Phoebus for this month's recipe, a sweet treat anyone can make for an afternoon snack. Check it out. So today we're gonna to be making fried Oreos. And the ingredients you will need is pancake batter, Oreos, water, and cooking oil. You mix the pancake batter with the water. And then you can dip the cookies in the batter. When the cookie is completely covered with the batter, you can put it into your pan or pot. Put it in your pan or pot until it's golden brown, and then you can take it out. And enjoy! Many thanks to our team led by Sanera Sim Jones. Those cookies were great, and plus, it's a simple, simple recipe that can be made at home. Love that little intro too. That was cute. I'm looking forward to next month's recipe. And moving on, each show we will look into the lives of celebrities, but in a unique way. We will look at their lives behind the scenes and see how they are contributing to the betterment of our world. We call this segment Philanthropic Global Awareness. Our first celebrity to look at is Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio has teamed up with climate change activist Greta Thunberg to form a campaign to help the alleged problem of climate change around the world. DiCaprio and Thunberg want to make sure future generations will be able to experience a healthy and livable planet. DiCaprio says, and I quote, climate change is real, it is happening right now. It is the most urgent threat facing our entire species and we need to work collectively together and stop procrastinating. Glad to know there are people out there concerned with the future of our world. Another topic of discussion we'll do this month is about the latest tech gear that's out. This month, we're going to be focusing on, drum roll please, the iPhone X. There are multiple versions you can get with this phone, including the iPhone XR, X, X Max, and X Max S. With a revolutionary camera screen and revolutionary to this world. This is the phone of, this is a chone of iPhone lovers to all those Androidians out there. It may be time to make the switch. Next up, we have a unique sports segment with Chakri. Instead of just dishing out scores, records, and stats, we're taking a different approach to sports around Hampton. Any college recruiters in the area? Our sports segment is geared to you. We will take a look at players in Hampton to look out for in the future. These athletes will range from late middle school age through 12th grade. Up first, of course, a few of our very own Phoebus High School athletes. Shakri? Here are the top, five, top three players from Phoebus High School. The first player is Christopher Daniels, Phoebus High School starting quarterback. 
If you're looking for a quarterback who can pose a threat with his elite passing game as well as his rushing game, Christopher Days is the guy you should strongly consider recruiting. In just the first five games, he's passing for 25, 24 to 49 with six passing touchdowns. As far as rushing goes, he has 118 rushing yards accompanied by two rushing touchdowns. Up next is running back Anthony Turner, a running back who can get you down the field if you give him enough touches. With only 61 carries, Turner is rushing for the unreal 793 yards with 13 rushing touchdowns. Anthony Turner is no stranger to the passing game, racking up eight, four receptions with 88 yards, complete, complemented by one receiving touchdown. Last on the list is Ivy Harrell. At this point in the season, he's racked up 28 tackles, six of those were tackles for loss. He's also had three sacks, along with the forced fumble <laughs> and one fumble recovery and two pass breakups. Be aware, this is only through the first five games of the season. Well, as you can see, these three guys are phenomenal players on the field. So the recruiters out there watching, be sure to watch the show next time for a set of new players. Thanks, Shakri. If you're a recruiter for a college or know some recruiters, these are some key players to look at for Phoebus. We know it's now playoff season for football, so do keep in mind that those stats were from very early on in the regular season. Also, if you're an athlete, don't worry. Next month, you can be sure we'll look into other players throughout the city. And if you're a fan of the 60s and 70s, like my friend Marmar, it's time to take a blast to the past on a little segment we call Memory Lane. Hey, I'm Armar Flores, and I'm going to be talking about some of the most definitive rock albums that were released this month over 50 years ago. So get ready, because you're about to take a trip down memory lane. On November 22nd, 1968, the Beatles released their self-titled ninth studio album, which has since been dubbed by everyone as the White Album because of its iconic plain white cover. Most of the songs were composed while attending a transcendental meditation course in India with the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, and they were inspired by their experiences there. On the retreat, none of the Beatles were able to smoke, which prompted John Lennon to write the song, I'm So Tired, because of his struggle with cigarette withdrawal. And Dear Prudence was also written by John Lennon for Prudence Farrow, sister of actress Mia Farrow, who locked herself in her hut for three weeks during the retreat. The song is John's way of imploring her to come out. Other great songs on the album include While My Guitar Gently Weeps, Blackbird, Happiness is a Warm Gun, and the very controversial Revolution 9. Next up is Pink Floyd's tragic rock opera, The Wall, which was released on November 30th, 1979, and was the band's 11th studio album and their longest one by 80 minutes. The songs in the album create a storyline about the life of a jaded rock star named Pink who lives in isolation and builds a psychological wall to protect himself from society and all of its troubles. It's been said that lyricist Roger Waters based the character of Pink off of original lead singer Sid Barrett, who struggled with schizophrenia. The album was also made into a feature-length film in 1982, and I highly recommend watching it for the full storytelling experience. Songs on the album include classics such as Another Brick in the Wall, Parts 1, 2, and 3, Hey You, and Comfortably Numb. Now last, but most definitely not least, another very powerful rock opera album by a little band you may have heard of called Queen. On November 21st, 1975, Queen released their fourth studio album, A Night at the Opera and we were gifted with masterpieces such as Love of My Life, which Freddie Mercury wrote for his then-girlfriend, Mary Austin, and You're My Best Friend, written by bassist John Deacon, for his wife. And of course, the quintessential work of art known as Bohemian Rhapsody, which actually almost wasn't even released because EMI Chief Roy Featherstone thought a six-minute song wouldn't appeal to audiences. I know I speak for everyone when I say he couldn't have been more wrong. I mean, imagine a world where we never got to hear all of those glorious harmonies and falsettos and Brian May's epic guitar solo. No wonder it was the most expensive album ever recorded at the time. But as we know, it's not how much money it costs to make the album, but what the album means to someone. So I encourage all of you to go home and listen to at least some of the songs I've mentioned here, because I promise they'll change your life for the better. Until next time, I'm Mario Mario Flores, and you just took a trip down memory lane. If you're into more recent topics, get ready to get down on what's up this month. So, what's up this month in November? Is Kanye West releasing an opera? That's what it says according to his Twitter. We all know that the West family has been through a lot lately. And who knows? That may be some of the inspiration behind this production. What else is up? On November 9th, Ed Sheeran broke his performance hiatus while performing for the daughter of Gordon Ramsay, Matilda Ramsay, 
18th birthday, he performed a set of five songs. What a lucky girl. According to Sharon, he performed for, for free as a favor to the, to the Ramsey family. And while we're on the topic of music, the American Music Awards are coming up soon, with Post Malone leading with the highest number of nominations. While artists are breaking hearts, let's start jumping on the edge of our seats with the latest movies and TV shows at the box office and on your VODs. VODs, videos on demand, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu. Nadia, if you keep up with the Netflix series, get ready to start binge watching if you already have it. As, a, as the second season of the dramatic series Insatiable is now out, along with this enchantment for its second season, the third season of On My Block is in production. And not last but not least, Stranger Things season four is, has been at least somewhat announced. I can't wait. Is Hopper dead or is he still alive? <laughs> The new movie Joker won the Golden Lion World and has become the highest grossing rated R film ever with a new high, just over $1 billion, according to the internet movie database, imb.com. And for all you zombie lovers, Zombieland 2 has come out in theaters along with Gallows 2. And for all the cuties who just love Elsa, Anna, and friends, Frozen 2 is the most recent release in theaters. If you like to stay at home and haven't jumped on VODs yet, we bet you can't wait for season two of Euphoria to hit HBO. If you're a fan of the classic 1976 original series or the two film adaptations, then you should be more than excited to watch the recent Charlie's Angels remake, along with The Addams Family. And if you're a Will Smith fan, his movie Gemini Man has come out on, and Netflix has already announced the bundle of romantic Christmas movies they'll be releasing this year. And Christmas Day at the theaters will be buzzing with another hopeful hit with Will Smith as he is teaming up with Tom Holland for Spies in Disguise. Last, but certainly not least on getting down on what's up, two words, Disney Plus. <laughs> oh my gosh, free for a year with Verizon? Be sure to call and have, if you have Verizon cell phone service, Disney has everything on there. Every Star Wars film, the new series Mandalorian, our, pro our producer John for this month says that that show alone is worth getting Disney Plus over Marvel films, all 22 of them, all the princess movies ever made by Disney, Boy Meets World, The Sound of Music, the list goes on and on. Download the app and you can try it for free for seven days. November is jam-packed with a ton of cool stuff in the world of entertainment. We hope you enjoyed getting down on what's up. Last up for this show for today, we have a little game that we got to play with a few people. If you've ever played Name That Tune or Name That Movie, there's another one you can add to the list, but this one's gonna get you thinking. Here's a little game we call Word Wrangler. Let's check it out. Welcome to a game of Word Wrangler. The rules are as follow. Player one starts with the famous person's first and last name. Example, Anthony Ramos. The second player starts with the first letter of the last name. Example, Rachel McAdams. The third player will also start with the first letter of their last name, such as Mary J. Blosh. You are allowed three hints from each player. Hi, I'm Jasmine Rubin, and I'm class of 2021. Hi, I'm Dory Sapoli, and I'm class of 2022. Hi, I'm Kayla Wiggins, and I'm class of 2022. Now that we have our contestants and our rules, let's begin in three, two, one. Ben Affleck. Amanda Seyfried. Um, Spencer Reed. Ryan Dawson. Um, Grant Gustin. Um, Gary Wilson. Will Smith. Sylvester Salon. Serena Williams. William Shakespeare. Sue Sylvester. <laughs> Sam Winchester. Wanda Sykes. Spencer Smith. Selena Gomez. Gary the Snail. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
um, Sam Smith. Sam Hunt. Harry Styles. Shawn Mendes. Mike Tyson. Tyra Banks. Bobby Smith. Steve Jobs. John Henry. Henry the Great. <laughs> Gary Owens. Oscar Wilde. <laughs> Whitney Houston. King Harry? Is it? Does that count? Because his first name is Harry. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you it was harder than it looks. At your next get together, or maybe over the holidays, try it out with some of your friends and family over some Oreos from the snack segment. All right, Oreos. Well, that's gonna wrap things up for our first show. We hope you enjoyed watching, as, enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed putting this together for you all. Until next time, I'm Tayshaun Alexander. This is Nadia Jacobs. And I'm Mario Flores. On air is going off air. Peace. Peace.